And now, welcome to Seven Questions with Emmy. Brought to you by Timberline Home, whose showroom in Idaho Falls is waiting for you to explore. Hey guys, welcome back to Seven Questions with Emmy. I'm Emmy Ian, and today I'm talking with Dr. Brian McLean. He and his collaborators discovered an unknown species of squirrel right here in Idaho. Dr. McLean, thank you so much for chatting with me today. It's my pleasure. I'm excited to talk about this new species. So how did you discover the new squirrel? We um, discovered it mostly through looking at its genetics. Uh, that was the, the main thing that told us this was a new species that we hadn't really yet described correctly. And so, um, you know, it's, it has relatives that look a lot like it, um, that live in about the same area. And so it was really only through looking at the genetics that we were able to tell that it was different. How did you come up with the name and did you get to choose it? So... What's interesting about naming species is there's all kinds of uh, laws that govern how you can name something. And um, if you're the first person to ever see it or observe it or describe it, and no one else has really done that, you kind of have um, your pick of names as long as one of them isn't being used. But, um, you know, mammals, a lot of people like mammals. I like mammals. I'm sure you do. And probably a lot of the viewers and um, mammals have been studied, you know, fairly in depth for some time. And so often, in, you know, in our country where mammals have been studied, you know, a decent amount, there's usually some name associated with a specific population or group. So in this case, these were um, two subspecies, which is kind of a group, a kind of a division below the species level that we had basically a Latin name already associated with it. And we just elevated that name to be a species name. But so there was an existing Latin name, but we did get to give it a new common name, which is how a lot of people might refer to it. You know, so that name is the Snake River Plains Ground Squirrel. That's really cool. What is the difference between the Snake River Ground Squirrel and other squirrels? So, okay, it um couple we can compare it to a couple of different kinds of squirrels. So if you just think about squirrels in general, there are in on our continent tree squirrels and ground squirrels. And ground squirrels are squirrels that kind of live in more open areas. They burrow, they they live and rest and sometimes hibernate in burrows. So you see them above ground, but um they also spend part of their time below ground, whereas tree squirrels Obviously, you're living in trees, moving around um, up and down trees, usually not hibernating, but active all year. And so, um, you know, it's different from those kind of squirrels in that it is a ground squirrel. It's it's living underground. It hibernates, actually, for a lot of the year. Um, it's adapted to kind of open desert habitats, like some of those in Idaho. So it's different from some other squirrels in that way. It's very hard to tell apart from its close relatives. And this is why it took us so long to realize it was a new species is because um, they all tend to be light colored, kind of pale colored uh, ground squirrels that you see out on the landscape. And it's it's really hard to tell them apart. So it's it's known it differs from its close relatives just by really subtle characteristics of its pelage and coloration and then some aspects of its skeleton. It's very hard to tell apart from its close relatives. Yeah. How long did it take you to discover this squirrel? Oh, gosh. How old are you, Emmy? 11. Okay. It took me almost as long as your age to discover it. So I started studying these back when I was in graduate school um, about nine years ago. First started sequencing some genes, uh, building evolutionary trees, looking at the diversity of, of species and groups. And so, um, yeah, it took nine years through a couple different research projects where we got more data and put it all together and was able to to really see that it was a new species. So nine years feels like an eternity. And there's, you know, with anything like with the groceries you buy at the store, uh, they have a shelf life, right? Some things go bad real quickly. Some things might stay good a little while longer, like a loaf of bread or something, um, there's a shelf life for new species. 
and biodiversity. So from the time someone goes out, a biologist goes out and maybe collects a specimen or observes a specimen and maybe puts it in a museum to the time someone realizes that's a new species and then describes it and writes, writes that up as a paper that can, there can be a shelf life there. So it's describing biodiversity can take a while. Yeah. Well, that's very impressive that you did. I don't think I could. So. <laughs> Why is the discovery such a big deal? Um, well, it's not every day you get to describe new species of anything. So it, it's just exciting to do that. Um, and it's not every day, certainly, that you get to describe a new species of mammal. So um, as I mentioned, you know, if you think about just North America or the U.S., we have a pretty good idea of the mammals that live here. Yeah. Um, they've been studied, you know, for a century or more in a lot of different aspects of their biology. And so it's also not every day you get to describe a mammal from where we sit here in the U S now mammals are being described more often these days from the tropics where there are more species or in countries or parts of the world that there hasn't been as much scientific exploration. So there's still mammals being described. Um, they tend not to come from where we sit as often. So just describing a new species, describing it from the U S is yeah. really cool. Yeah. That's really, it is really cool. Have you discovered any other animals or species? I have not personally. Um, I work on a lot of different topics in evolution and ecology. So describing species is kind of not what I do most days. And this was a rare opportunity to do that. But I do, um, I do work on basic uh, biodiversity science. So I my, my collaborators and I go out and um, survey different parts of the world for species, collect specimens, and some of that has resulted in new species. Um, so, for example, my collaborators described a new louse that occurs on a ground squirrel in Mongolia. Wow, that's really cool. So I was part of that. So there's all these kind of other parts of biodiversity, you know, in some cases, parasites or pathogens that might be living on or near a mammal. And then um, I've been working here, actually, on the other side of the country from you in North Carolina. We've been working up in the Appalachian Mountains and finding new species of intestinal parasites that live in shrews, so little tiny mammals. So these other little kind of things associated with mammals, sometimes on the outside of the body, sometimes in their bodies, uh, we're still finding those as well. So it's always exciting to be part of those. Yeah, that's really cool. What do you want people to know about your discovery? Um, one thing is just that, you know, we don't know everything about our natural world. So we can still discover something as basic as a new species, um, as, you know, we show in this paper. And so just I want people to be curious about the natural world. We certainly don't know everything about it. And it's fun to go out and um, look for new things. And the other thing is um, just how cool the species is. So you get to enjoy it more often than I do because you live in Idaho, right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you'll get to see one one day. Um, maybe maybe before the next time I get to see one if you're in the right spot. So um, it, they're just cool little you know ground squirrels that really are adapted to drier habitats and seasonal habitats you guys have clear seasons there right are you at a winter yet uh no yeah <laughs> um and um so they've adapted to those kind of pressures by hibernating and they hibernate for over half the year in some cases so they're going to come out you know maybe now maybe in the next few weeks and they'll be out looking for food right when the first plants start growing in the spring, but by the end of the summer, they're going to be kind of, they will have mated hopefully or fattened up and they'll be ready going down underground to kind of start their next hibernation cycle. So they're, they're cool mammals that you might just kind of see in passing, maybe for driving, you see them on the side of the road. Um, 
We see what we'll take a picture. I'll think of you. <laughs> yes. And then, but they're doing really cool things and they're really nicely adapted to their, to the habitats there. Wow, that's that's really cool. If the, any viewers, if you guys see a, a Snake River ground squirrel, right? Snake River Plains ground okay. squirrel. Snake River Plains ground squirrel, then take a picture and be sure to send it to East Idaho News and we can send it to Brian. Sure, cool. yeah, I can't wait. Thank you so much for talking with me today. You're welcome. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, new set of questions and interviews are posted every Thursday. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Love you guys. Bye. Seven Questions with Emmy, brought to you by Timberline Hope, whose showroom in Idaho Falls is waiting for you to explore.